If you own a Sprinter van, you are guaranteed to run into this issue. At some point during the life of the vehicle, you will encounter a boost leak, and that leak will put your van into an engine limp mode and it'll just generally make it run very poorly. This video will show you the exact steps you need to take to find that boost leak. This is a turbo intercooler, and we're gonna discuss why this mess exists, but first we need to tackle the low-hanging fruit. Now I have here a partial view of your boost system. Just for clarity, your engine sits right in the middle, and this is the front of the vehicle where your radiator is. Let me show you another view just to show you what's going on. This is the front of the engine. The boost pipes are in blue. This is your turbo resonator. So just to give you an idea, this part is the same as this part. Now that we have that out of the way, let me show you the first place you should look for a boost leak. It's at the front of the vehicle on the right hand side facing the vehicle. This is the most common host break, simply because the air coming through here is still hot, because it sits before the turbo intercooler. First things first, you want to check this pipe for leaks. If you can't see any visible leaks, you want someone to be revving the engine as you're checking. That way the leaks will become far more apparent and you'll likely hear something. The second place to look is the cool side. Now, even though the boosted air has cooled down after passing the intercooler, you still want to check this side simply because it is prone to break. They're rubber hoses and they only last for so long. So step one, hot side. Step two, check the cold side. Now, step three is a bit of an obvious one. This here is the turbo resonator. Just to give you an idea, again, you've seen this on top of your engine before. Here's your turbo, it sits at the center in the back of the engine, and air goes in, gets spooled up, and comes out. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've seen issues with the turbo resonator. A lot of times it occurs right after you've had some work done on your vehicle, given that the turbo resonator is held down by three bolts. You have two in the front, and then you have one in the back, which almost all mechanics seem to forget. So make sure this turbo resonator is in place. Make sure the rubber gasket here is in place. And just make sure there's no leaks. If you don't see any visible leaks, have someone rev the engine slightly while looking at it. Now, tip number four, is the turbo intercooler itself. And this brings us all the way back to the first picture we saw. Now remember, the pressurized air comes in through here, it cools down, and then it comes back out and into your engine. This is the route the air takes. Now, if you look at the older sprinters, this entire intercooler is made of metal. Newer ones were not so lucky. As you can see here, we have a whole lot of junk, and this is the hot side. It's sitting upside down, so don't let that confuse you. The newer ones, 2007 plus, they all seem to be made out of plastic. And believe it or not, at some point in their time, maybe around 200,000 miles or so in my personal experience, these will leak. It's likely the toughest part to diagnose, given that it's not always leaking. Sometimes it will leak after a certain period of driving. You turn on the engine, you're good for a while, maybe a certain amount of heat causes the seal to open up again, and then boom, you have a leak 20, 30 minutes down the road. It can be extremely frustrating to try and diagnose this. That's why a lot of times you need a smoke machine if you do have trouble, but that's for a different video. So tip number four, the fourth place you wanna look, you want to check this intercooler. Tip number five, this gets a little bit interesting here. We're going to follow the air back to where it starts, which means we're gonna look at this picture right here. Now, hopefully you recognize this, just so that we're all on the same page. This is your turbo, this is your air snorkel, the intake, where the air comes in, non-pressurized air, turbo spools it up, pressurized air. This specific issue occurs right here, especially at the bottom, it can crack or it can get pushed off. This happens so many times. When this does happen, it's technically not considered a boost leak, 
but it will still cause your engine to run like garbage. It will cause a engine limp home mode. The reason for that is because you have a MAF sensor, which calculates the volume of air coming in. Now, after that sensor, you still have other ways of measuring the volume of air later on in the system. So it compares those values. And when it recognizes that there's a difference in air volume, it will trigger that code. So if you have an offset drift at idle, offset drift under load, those are very clear indicators that you have certain issues with your air intake system. That's tip number five. I'll give you two more bonus tips. Bonus tip number one, you have a small rubber seal that sits right here. If you're taking things off and putting them back on, it's super easy to slip off. Check that seal. A lot of times your engine will maybe be making a funny noise if that seal isn't there. Again, it's just a, a small little rubber O-ring. Tip number six is the PCV pipe right here. Now I have a whole nother video on that, which I'll link to right here, but at some point these get brittle and they can also they can also break you'll see little cracks at the bottom of them and you just want to replace the whole thing if you see that use a rubber hose a radiator hose from AutoZone those work fine hard to see but this hose right here I'll link the video in case you want to know more about PCV hoses now if there's more to this topic that I haven't covered let me know in the comments if you want to see an in-depth video on a smoke test on how I diagnose these issues the quickest way possible. Go ahead and subscribe for that.